Okay, praise the Lord. It's a strange lesson, <laughs> but it's good. Hallelujah. We are learning everything now. Everything is new, new, new. Our chairs, the way we put them is new. You can't rob your sister, embrace your sister again, but we thank God. There's a place that will walk each other, will enjoy each other in heaven. Mm. And even after this tea here, hallelujah. Mm. I didn't want to come up to make the time long. My own testimonies are too much. Mm. Hallelujah. The Lord has taught me that it's good to serve the Lord. It's good to be a pastor. It's good to be a servant of God. The Lord has told me that it's good not to do any other job when the Lord says, don't do it and serve me. Hallelujah. When the Lord calls you, he defines. He calls some people, he says, you will work and serve me. Call some people, say you will serve me full time. When he calls me, say you will not do any other thing, you will serve me. When you see the crash here, I'm not working money. The crash is part of the vision, just like the retreat center that we have not started. It's part of the vision. So, uh, we, we brought the creation so that the kids can even hear Jesus loves you. That's the reason. If you look at our brochure, or those of us who have our brochure, you see that the creation is one of the strategy to minister total health to total man through the kids. So when the lockdown came, everything, and the creation was contributing much to the rent of the church. As they are saying, I was just, I had my peace. I didn't call myself. I told God that you say that, no soldier go to war at his own expense. The soldier go to war at the expense of the nation that sends him or her. So I'm going to this war at your own expense. The spiritual battle to snatch souls to heaven. So I say I will not worry. But one time, like a human being, worries come. But then during this long lockdown, I felt one of us to first stand the whole church for your giving. They gave to me like. When, I, when there was no corona, I didn't receive such gift, frankly speaking. <laughs> Frank, I, we, we, we are it. I said, sometimes I look at the house. I said, wow. Wow. There was no need to worry again. Thank you very much, church. You might not have given, but you prayed. Thank you very much for praying for us. So one of the biggest things was yesterday. It was on Friday, on Saturdays in our home, we don't pray together. On Saturdays, I pray with Papa, uh, Uncle pray with Prince, Sister Ruta pray with Eden. That's how Papa said we should be doing. So that we can fellowship person to person, we can get into, to born again, to into reborn, family born. So when we were praying with Papa, Papa, we pray other things, then Papa said, he has not paid the rent, he's owing the rent. I was thinking we are only one more rent in our house. He says three more. I say, yeah, we have never done this in life. But I told him that the God who calls us will know. Because he is not working now. He was working and paying the rent. So he is not working. Ha. Ah, and look at it. Then again, the other day he made a statement. I said, look, God called me to serve him full time. Whether whether crash or no crash, whether what church or no church, I'll serve him. That God know how he will do. He will do miracles. So, but we prayed that Saturday, and I told him that, let's pray one prayer for me. I want cash in my hand, let God give me money. You know, that kind of prayer is funny. You know that you work, you have money, mm -hmm. you, you, you do your crash. When there's a program here, I just move my money from the crash. I do, I don't care. When there's something I just do, I don't care. Ha. Now I say, God, put money in my hand. Ha. Yesterday, God put money in my hand. Hallelujah! Amen. For the second time, I think the first time was when a brother put me 500 and many years behind in my hand in this church. I was so happy. People give me things, they give me stuff, but hardly money. So that brother, brother gave me 500 and I was so happy. Yesterday, one brother here gave me money, gave us an, an envelope. Then we went, I was counting, do you know how much? 1,000. Ah, yeah. We're jumping. I said, Papa, we'll just pay our tithe, move some. Start keeping for the rent. Yeah, that's that's a seat of faith. Start keeping. God will provide the other one for the rent. It's about like fifteen thousand, but God will provide. That's God. I was so excited because that money has already paid all the rent to me. Hallelujah. So God bless all of us too much. God bless us. It's good to see you again. Hallelujah. 
So the choir sang a song here. They say, um, at the center of it all. I thought that song was for me. Hallelujah. I don't know whether it was for you. At the center of everything we are going through is Jesus. And he will never fail us. Hallelujah. Uh, it's just that is this kind of time. I would have loved us to just sing a chorus of that song. But it say at the center of it all is Jesus. Not so. Oh, I wish you people could see this. Do you, are you comfortable sitting behind me like this? Yes. No. I want to see the people. We are tapping. We are tapping. <laughs> I want to be seeing the people. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So, my message today is titled in times like this. In what? In times like this. You need a savior. In times like this. You need an uncle, be very sure, be very sure. You are uncle host and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one, be very sure. Be very sure you are a co-host and grips the solid rock. I'm very sure, I'm very sure my anchor co-host and grips the solid rock. Hallelujah! In times like this, it was a bad time, but it was a good time for every believer all over the world. Not only Balm of Gilead. It was to tickle us. It was to quicken our heart to know that we are strangers in this world. To know that we have to be preparing for an eternal home. Hallelujah. To know that all other grounds are sinking, sinking sand. On Christ, a solid rock alone, I stand. Hallelujah. Amen. On him alone we stand. All other grounds are sinking sand. Whatever thing we keep in this world is sinking sand. The only thing we take from this world to heaven is our children. That you can preach Christ to them and go with them to heaven. Things of this world remain here. Hallelujah. In times of unusual pandemic, they call it coronavirus. Whether it came from where or from where, from where, but it is a time that has stirred the whole universe. It has stirred the, the whole world. Not the whole universe, the whole world. Hallelujah! When there are lots of conspiracy, lots of conspiracy theory, lots of some of them, I like to listen to them and draw my conclusion. Hallelujah! Then you begin to hear, when I was at home, I read a lot. I pray a lot too. I study the Bible. I, I try to say, I begin to hear a microchip. <laughs> This, some of these things have been existing. Some of us were busy, we even know. I begin to hear words like microchips. I begin to hear words like 5Gs. <laughs> I begin to hear an artificial intelligence. <laughs> I begin to hear such words. And I begin to hear all linking to 666, as they were saying, mark of the beast. And many other things are still coming. I begin to hear vaccine. Oh, vaccine, don't take, take. Don't take, don't take, don't take, don't take. Oh, we can take, we can many things confusing oh, at the center of it all is who is jesus. jesus hallelujah Amen. so brethren in times like this what should we as believers be busy doing that's the question what should we be doing the tendency is for us believers if we don't take time to join the the crowd and talk about these happenings, and talk about the, the end time, and talk about 666, don't take, don't, don't even be frightened about 666. You can't take it without your will. Hallelujah. God will not allow you to take it without your will. And if you're standing in God, you don't even need to fear. When we begin to hear such things, what should we be busy doing? The tendency is for us to join and talk and talk and talk and forget one thing. Take care of that child. I'll give your attention to me here. Will not be long. 
Hallelujah. I cover you with the blood of Jesus, my baby. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus upon you. So, we should be busy doing what at this time? If we join the world to talk about one of the tricks of the devil during this end time. Hello? I want to see your hands and see your eyes. One of the tricks of the enemy during this end time is to make us join and talk and talk about these things, but forget our relationship with God. Forget the goal of our faith. First Peter chapter 1, verse 8 to 9, make us to understand that the goal of our faith is the salvation of our souls. The goal of our faith is what? The salvation of our soul. That means the end result. The combination, the, the goal, the final thing about the reason why we believe Jesus Christ is that our soul should be saved from hell. Salvation of our souls. Hallelujah. That's the reason. We can be busy talking, talking, but forget to be preparing our soul for eternity. Please, don't be caught up, don't be sidetracked. Hallelujah. I say that it is good to talk on those things, but you should be cautious, you should be focused. The salvation of our souls. So, the first thing we have to be constantly doing, we say what should believers be doing in such times like this, we have to constantly be checking our personal relationship with God. We're going to talk about two points, that's the first one, is long, the second one is short. Constantly checking our relationship with who? With God. That's what we have to be doing in times like this. Let's just look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. We'll read a number of places, so we'll just quote. Matthew chapter 22, from verse 37. Matthew 22, from verse 37. Uh, I would like us to start from 34. I like the, 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 the teachers of the Lord, the Sadducees and the Pharisees because they constantly ask questions from Jesus. And in answering those questions, Jesus makes us to learn. 34. Hearing that Jesus has silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this word, with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. Love your, the Lord your God. Personal relationship. You can't love a person without a personal relationship. You can't love a person without a relationship with that person. There's no way. And if we are going to say that we love God, we have must have gone into a personal, no general relationship, personal relationship with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Bible says we should love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And another one is that we should love our neighbor and ourselves. There's something they call the acid test. Who has heard about the acid test? Sister, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Dr. Anne, what is an acid test? When they say in English, the acid test, I'm not talking about lab, I'm not talking about chemistry. Yeah, an acid test is something to, to prove. It's like something to really prove that something is genuine. It's not a test. It's, so to test your faith, to see whether your personal relationship is cordial with God, the acid test, I say, is do you feel free? Do you talk about this Jesus freely to people? How much do you talk about Jesus? That's to see whether you are really in a relationship, a love relationship with Jesus. When you meet new people, do they quickly realize you are a Christian? That's your test, that's your acid test. Do they quickly realize this woman, this man, this girl is a believer, is a child of God? Do your customers see Christ in you? Do they know that you are a child of God? Your family member, do they know that you are born again? Your friends, do they know? And if they know, even you screen the friends. 
You, because when you are in love with somebody, talk about that person. Always. We are not kidding. It's true practically in, in their life. In real life, that's how it is. And in, in Christendom, if your relationship with Christ, you must constantly talk about him. You must constantly think about my lover, Jesus. You must constantly, when you are conversing with somebody, you, reach, you do that unconsciously because we are in a relationship. That's how you should check. Why is my personal relationship with Christ? How much do I take talk to people about this Jesus? They are, they are conversing, conversing. Uh, a, a friend will come and converse to you. Hey, you know her. The things are bad down. But you know, you must not just, you must speak a certain language to have certain things said. Eh? You must, you must just lie. You, 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 I just, I just told a man that, no, I bought this car for 50,000. The man gave me 100,000. Hey, you are loving. And you say nothing when you are there as a child of God. You are, if you are in love with Jesus, say, but good. It's good to, to say the car. You can say any amount you want. But don't lie. Don't say I bought for 50,000 when you bought for 30,000 and sell it for 150,000. You must, when they are discussing, when they talk immoral things around you, you come in with Jesus because you love him. You don't want his spirit in you to be grieved by listening to those immoral talk. How much you talk about him, not to show, but it is natural. You think about him, you talk about him. That's the test whether you are in a good relationship with Jesus. People come around you, they just know you. Because you talk about that you are Jesus. How much do you talk about? How much do you desire his presence? If you love the Lord God, uh, uh, Sister Anne was, was testifying here that she spent time in the world. If you love Jesus, you will spend time. So in times like this, we should be busy examining our relationship with God, with Jesus. Is it cordial? You're spending time with him. Most of us talk about 666. If I ask us to even quote the place that talk about 666 here, how many people know that place? Huh? How many people can quote the, 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 even the book and then the chapter? We are busy listening 666, 666. Without going into personal relationship with Jesus, you have to dig the scriptures. You have to desire him in prayer. Spend time with him. So why these things are happening? Be busy preparing. Hallelujah. And then you also have a good relationship with human being. The Bible tells us in John chapter, first John chapter 4, that there's, there's no way you can say you love God that you don't see without loving your neighbor. Hallelujah. Without loving your brother. When you have a relationship with God, you have with human beings. It is not a time to say, I don't talk to him. And, and it start with your immediate family. It start with your wife, you have with your husband, start with your children. Good relationship with human beings. Then to your neighbors, then to your customer, then to anyone who has even hurt you. You don't even need to sit on that thing again and say, I don't forgive. Ay, 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 ay. This time around, God has spoken. Should God speak again more than coronavirus? <laughs> Should he give another uh, lecture, another revelation again more than this? Sit there and say you will not forgive. Sit there and begin to hold your heart. You will go to hell. Because the Bible says if you don't forgive, you will not forgive. And we go to God for forgiveness each time. Maybe we even came here and say, Lord, forgive me. Every time. Then you don't want to forgive. You don't want to amend. You may say the person is like a demon. Yes, forgive him. Hallelujah. Because the word of God says us, we don't need to go reading. We, we, we have been talking about that thing here over and over. Hallelujah. Good relationship with God. Good relationship with human beings. Test your relationship with God. How much do I talk about him? How much do I desire to study his word? How much do I desire to pray? How much do I desire to spend time with him? At this time when people are busy running up and down saying all type of things and God has given us life. That's how we have to be doing. Constantly checking our personal relationship with God, whether it is cordial. I want us to have a case study of that. The case study of that is the Pharisee. The Pharisee in the book of John, in the book of John chapter 5, Jesus made a statement there about the, the Pharisee. A, a, a serious statement. John chapter 5, 
We are going to read 38 and 39. No, from 37. John chapter 5 from verse 37. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form. No, does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the word he said. You diligently study the scripture because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. Hallelujah. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees like this. He, the statement he made in that 39, he told the Pharisees they diligently searched the scripture. They did what? Diligently. The Pharisees did not just read anyhow. They took time to search the scripture. Because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me. Why did Jesus make this statement? The Pharisee didn't believe he was the son of God. The Pharisee thought he was blasphemy. The Pharisee thought that he claiming to be the son of God was blas he was blasphemy. Eh? Because why? But Jesus said, eh, eh, you study the scripture. You study, you, when Jesus is talking about the scripture here, remember that he's not talking about New Testament. New Testament was written and put together after the death of Christ. But he was talking about the Old Testament. He was talking about the book of Moses, the law. He was talking about the, 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 the letters, the prophets, the books that the prophets wrote. <coughs> yeah? Genesis to Malachi. That's what Jesus was saying. You diligently, you study it with all care. You think that it with all care. That you are studying them to know about the Messiah. Because they were expecting the Messiah. Seriously. <clears throat> the Jews were expecting the Messiah seriously, just as we are expecting the second coming of Christ. They were expecting. And they were studying the scripture. That by them, they have eternal life. They will know when the Messiah will come. But when the Messiah came, they never knew. They missed the Messiah. Most of them, some of the Jews believe. Not all the Jews miss it. But most of them, especially the religious people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teachers of the law, the elders of the people, all these people, they missed the coming of the Lord. Let's not miss the, coming of, the second coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. You may read the scripture, but you may read the way the Pharisee read. The, the Pharisee read the scripture. They read the scripture, they search the scripture, but with blinded religious eyes. Their eyes were blinded by religion. Then the, the scripture, uh, uh, Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, it says that the flesh, it is the spirit, the flesh counts for nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you read the Bible with a fleshly eye, when you have not first of all entered into a deep and intimate relationship with Jesus, you will be like a Pharisee. The second coming will catch you on a way. Will get hold of you, you will not even know. These people were really, their spiritual eyes were blocked by what? This, the honor in Luke chapter 14 verse 7, the Bible says they took seat of honor. Jesus was warning. When they go anywhere, they want to be seen. Don't you know we are the big people of the church who sit on this front seat? You see us? <clears throat> Their motives were wrong. They prayed in, in Matthew chapter 6 verse 6. Jesus was telling them, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. They like to stand at the corner of the road and show that we are praying. Even when you pray in the church and out of church, do you want to just show people that you are praying? Fasting. Hey, when they fasted, they, they would just make their face look like this. Don't you know we are fasting? It is time for some religious group to give a time and the whole world is showing them on the television. Hey, we are fasting. Religion blinded them. They could not know when the Messiah came. They love to be greeted in marketplaces. All those kind of things. And in this generation, you may not be like that, but you are following somebody who's like that. You know we follow human beings like this. 
Some of the people that will take, some of the ministers, uh, uh, people of God that will call, prophet and all the like that will put their pictures on our cars and all the like. Do we know them? Do you even know that person? Now we tend to worship man instead of God. We are worshiping human being. These things blind your eyes. You don't see the scripture. Go back to a relationship with Jesus and worship that Jesus and not man. Hallelujah. Amen. You take the photo of somebody, put it in your, your profile picture. You have never seen that person. You have never communicated with him. You don't even know him. You worship human being. It will block your eyes when the master comes. You will be reading the, reading the scripture, but that's what the world is after. It has entered the church. We, we magnify human being. That's how these people were. Because of their spiritual blindness or no relationship with Jesus Christ, the Pharisee could not have a revelation of the Messiah when he came. They persecuted him. They treated him and led him to the cross and said, come, come down and prophesy. We know about professors, so and so. Who are you? You are sitting there, they are beating you. Can you come like professor so and so and bring fire from the down and do this miracle and snake come out of people? Can you do like that? We are all so like that, those Pharisees. We have to be busy building a cordial relationship with Jesus deep. Hallelujah. Leave all this nonsense. It's time to come. Coronavirus has stopped. <laughs> Who was there to even heal? It's only Jesus. Hallelujah. So, the, you know where they fell? They fell, first of all, in a personal relationship with Jesus. As we say in that John chapter 6, verse 63, brethren, if you have not been really, truly born again, the, the scripture will be boring to you. You don't even like to, to you will not excite your heart. You will not enjoy it. May you be truly born again in Jesus' name. May you go back and check whether your relationship with Jesus is fine. We have told you how to check. Do you love him? Do you love to talk about him? Do people around you come around and know that this is a child of God? Do they know? Do you love to pray? Do you like to spend time with Jesus? What is it that attracts you to God? That is one of the things. No personal relationship. When you don't have the personal relationship, you will read the scripture with religious eyes. What is this? You know scripture is revelation. It's revelation. It is the Holy Spirit because of your connectedness, your relationship with Christ that reveals the scripture to you. You will read it and not understand. And when you, when you have that personal relationship with Christ, the way you enjoy Jesus, hi, the way you enjoy Christ, I don't know how to put it. It's so beautiful that I don't even know how to put it. It's so glorious. Most of the time we waste our time, we, we waste our energy for nothing. We don't enjoy this Jesus because of we blind our eyes with other things. So when the Messiah came, they miss it. Why? You may also have given your life to Jesus and you have a relationship with Jesus, but you don't seek the script, you don't search the scripture. You don't think deep, no matter who you are. If you don't search the scripture, you can miss the second coming. Because there are things that God wants to reveal to you as an individual, only to you, only to you. Maybe this church, there's a part of it that you are the one to bring fire. But you don't go to the scripture, how do we know? It's not about some people standing here preaching. It's about all of us. So, you may say, hey, I have a relationship with Jesus. How much time do you spend in the world? If you love somebody, wouldn't you like to hear the voice of that person? Wouldn't you like to hear the word of that person? No, these are to even common relationship friends like um, I have a boy, I'm a boy, I have a friend boy. I'm a girl, I have a friend girl. You like to be near that person. You like to hear the voice. You like to call the person each time. And then when that person speaks, you will hear his voice. Then you will be in the room and when that person speaks, also you will hear know that this is Brother Hans. You will know. Because you know, we have to know the voice of Christ. And we know the voice of Christ by reading and understanding the word. You are born again, but how much time do you spend in the word of God? How much time? So, they didn't spend the time in the word of God. They didn't examine the prophet. That's why Jesus said, you spend, you don't talk about me, you are blind to see me as the one that the scripture is talking about. 
When Jesus came in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 4, if the Pharisee were reading, were reading the scripture, they would have known that it is a Messiah. And brethren, you may think that it's easy to, to know that. They had to seek it diligently. They had to really search. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, the Bible tells us there that when um, sorry, Isaiah chapter 14 verse 7 the Bible tells us it's talking about a virgin a virgin will be with child I think I'm missing a place 714, Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 yeah, it says a virgin will be with child I don't know why that place is escaping but it said, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign the Lord himself was going to give a sign to the people of that time. To the Pharisees and those living at that time. The Lord was going to give a sign. The virgin will be with a child, with a child, and will give birth to a son, and you call him who? Emmanuel. God with us. If the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law and all the elders, they search these scriptures, then by then this scripture was existing. They would have been say, eh, hey, but I'm hearing that this Mary was a virgin. He gave birth to a son. That's how we do. When you hear these things that I was saying to the world, what do you do? Go back to the scripture and search. They are talking about 666. How will it be? They are talking about this government. They, some of these uh, prophecies are too complex for you to understand, but you understand simple things concerning the coming of the Christ and you prepare your relationship with God the more. They would have known that this boy Jesus. The Bible says that a, a virgin would be with child. They never, they never understood. And in, in, in that very Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, the Bible says that for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his soldiers. He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. They would have searched the scripture. They say, hey, the Bible say, a child is born. A son is given. He will be called wonderful. He will be called mighty God. Hey, Jesus Christ is claiming that he is God. I and my father are one. But the Bible, in, in Isaiah, this, this, these scriptures were there when the Pharisees were persecuting Jesus. But they were not meticulous in digging the scripture. They didn't know. But the, the Bible says that he will be called mighty God. A son but this man is claiming to be the son of God and is claiming to be equal with God. What does the Bible say? Oh, Isaiah is saying a child will be given. He will be called mighty God. This may be the Christ. That's how I have to dig. The scripture was there. But the diligent didn't read it because they needed salvation, but they were reading with religious eyes. Don't read the scripture with religious eyes. Don't only go to the place, eh, Sister Nina. Don't only read the place that talk good. You will be rich, you will be this. Go to the place that tell you to stop sin. Amen. Read those places, hit yourself and say, Lord, I have to prepare for your coming. Amen. Don't only read things that are good. I'm not talking to Sister Nina, I know I'm, I'm calling her name to wake her up, but I'm talking to all of us. Hallelujah. Read those places that are hard on you. Some, Christ, some believers, they, they choose. They just go and look, look one scripture. That's where they are every day. They are reading only that one scripture. Read the whole scripture and let it speak to you and cleanse you. The word of God is water that cleanses. Hallelujah. The Bible says so. So they never knew when the Messiah came. When the Bible says he came, he, there was no beauty on him. Even in Isaiah 53, there, there was no beauty of him, on him. Huh? There was no comeliness on him. And when, when, when he came, Hosea also Hosea also talked about Jesus. You see, there were many places. Hosea, Joy Amos. Let's look at Hosea, what is talk about Jesus. Hosea chapter 11, verse 1. The Bible says there that when Israel was a child, I loved him. And called out of Egypt, I call my son. Hallelujah. Do you know that this one is talking about Jesus? In Matthew chapter 2 verse 15, when Jesus was born, the Bible said to fulfill what the prophets say, out of Egypt I call on my son. But it wasn't easy to just see this. 
you have to read and ask the Holy Spirit to interpret before you know that he's talking about him. Because they took Jesus and hid him in Egypt. There are many scriptures, there are many prophecies, even in Genesis chapter 3 verse, verse 15. The Bible started talking about Jesus. The seed of the woman shall bruise your head. But they were reading it with eyes of religion. Hallelujah. So, your personal relationship with Jesus is what will open your spiritual eye to read and understand the scripture. That's where it starts. And when you have a personal relationship with Jesus, don't also just sit like some of us don't open the Bible. If the Lord calls you for you to go and hold a mic and start preaching without knowing the scriptures, I say that's an abomination. You may not need to know the whole Bible, but spend time. Study first of all for yourself. Hallelujah. Don't just pick a Bible and know what. That's how people go into heresy and many people go off and go into funny things and go into wrong doctrines. Because you just think that you are called by God. You just know one sentence to go. Study the Bible. Hallelujah. So now when you stand, the Bible studies says in Timothy, that study to show yourself a man, a proof of God that need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. For yourself and for others. Amen. So that's what we are saying. They did not, these prophecies that talk about Jesus, they did not know. So they fell. May we not fail in Jesus' name. Amen. We have to be current, my brothers. I'm not saying that don't be current. Listen to this thing. Go to the scripture. Draw your conclusion. If you want to contrast, you contrast the prophet of all with the Pharisee. You know, we are using our case story to study the Pharisee. <coughs> I just want to read one scripture. To compare, to compare or contrast, not co compare, but contrasting the Pharisee in First Peter, First Peter chapter one. We want to contrast the Pharisee with the prophet of the old. First Peter chapter one, verse ten to eleven. First Peter chapter one, verse ten to eleven. Peter was talking. He says. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you search intently and with the greatest care, try to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the suffering of Christ and the glorious the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you. When you then spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels longed to look into these things. Hallelujah. The prophet, they searched the scripture. They saw, they read about the Christ. They were searching. Which time when the Christ came? When Christ came, he was telling the people, he was, uh, uh, Peter was saying that, when Christ came, he was saying that the prophet, the search, the Bible, they wanted to know the, from the scripture which time he was pointing that the Christ would come and suffer. He would suffer. Those who were nailing Christ on the cross didn't read that scripture that the Christ would suffer. They would have said, no, I will not take part in this suffering of, of this man. I will not take part. They never read. Pray them. It's time to dig the scripture. It's time to go to the Bible. You who is born again and sure of your relationship with Jesus, dig the scripture. You who is, who is not sure of your relationship, make your relationship with Christ. Hallelujah. And make your relationship with Christ. You know, when we talk about our, our, our relationship with Christ, I want to point you to one thing. It is not about we. It is not about we. Say it's not about we. It's about me. And God. We are a church, Bam of Gideon. Good. It's good to be together like a, a, a church, believers. But when it comes to a personal relationship, it's about you and your God. Hallelujah. It's about what? You and your God. It's not about uh, we is not about we again. Because if you take we, 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 you fail. Amen. Amen. It's about you and your God. So you have to be intimate. We remember the parable of the, the, the widows, the, the virgins, the ten virgins. They were ten. Do you know that all these virgins, if, you, uh, if they want to put them, 
they were all believers. He's talking about believers. They were all born again believers. Ten virgin. They were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for the coming of Christ. Jesus was telling this parable pertaining to the second coming. Pertaining to the time that he will come again. He was warning us to be prepared. He was warning us to be ready. He told a parable about ten virgins. They were waiting for the master of the banquet to come. And when the time was too long, there was drowsiness. Like in the world today, they were sleeping. But there were five out of these ten who were wise. They were wise. Five were foolish, but they were all born again believers. Do you know that when Christ came, not all born again believers will go? Only those that have kerosene in their lamp. Only those that have oil in their lamp. And oil come from the word of God. The Holy Spirit enlighten your heart. When you fellowship with God, the Holy Spirit enlighten your heart. You pray, you search the scripture. Then you, 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 you know when your spirit is strong in God. If you are born again, you know that. You know when you are just living your life too. So five of them were wise. As we said that, we should check our relationship. We should constantly check our relationship with Jesus. That's what the five uh, wise virgins virgin were doing. They were checking their relationship with their master. Putting oil through the word of God. Putting oil through prayer. To putting oil through searching their life and removing all filthiness. When the master came, this wise one went. The foolish one remained. And he locked the door. That parable say the master locked the door. The foolish one went, they said they went and buy kerosene. Whether at that time you, you know when some people will disappear from this world after rapture. Some will run and come to this church. <laughs> they don't see person. They'll take their Bible and start reading at that time. Putting kerosene to in your lamb at wrong times. They will start praying, Koro koko Jesus, at the wrong time. Putting kerosene at wrong time. Putting oil in your lamb at wrong time. They are already gone. Then you begin to say, Master, also rapture me. Say, I know you not. Go away. I don't know you. They came to knock at the door. Jesus said, what is it that is tying you? And then the last thing I want to brush and will go. It says, that's the first thing. Check, constantly check your relationship with God. If your relationship is in first, check your, 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 your oil. Put in your oil. Are you in first with the God of God? How much do you? This time of lockdown, we say, families should pray. Even if you are only two of you, even if you are alone, pray. Some people may not pray. Some people are not holding anything. I don't know how many. And I said that I gave, we said that we gave that, that responsibility to male, to the male figure. Because the man is the head of the house. That they should organize services in their home. Do you know that if you organize where some unbelievers will even long to come? They were admiring us. If there was a way, they would have been rushing to our home, our house to come and fellowship. Not just because we are pastors. We could also just stay. Some people do not do it because you don't have that relationship with God. You don't. If you have that relationship with God, we we'll organize. I don't know. So, the, the, the second point, which we are going to talk briefly, get rid of all that contaminated spirit and body. Open your Bible and look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll read that one. Then, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We should get rid of the con uh, of all that contaminates spirit and body. The first one, check your relationship with Jesus. The second one, get rid. Get rid of all that contaminates. You know what is contamination? What is contamination? Can somebody shout for us, please? English speakers in the house. Defining. <coughs> Defining, yes? Define. That's another big term again. <laughs> what again? Contaminate, to dirty, to make dirty, to to make to stain, to put impurities. Hallelujah, to put impurities. There are some impurities in your life that Jesus wants you to remove. As we wait for His coming, busy waiting for His coming, and checking your life, and and putting kerosene in your lamp, and putting oil in your lamp. Get rid of all that contaminate spirit, body, and soul. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14. We'll read to chapter 7 verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. So what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can you lie have with darkness? 
What harmony, harmony is there between Christ and Balia? What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will live with them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters. Hallelujah, says the Lord Almighty. 7 verse 1. Since we have these promises, dear friend, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. Hallelujah. So the promises is that we should come out from the world and be separate from the sinful life we have been living, from the things that contaminate, that dirty our spirit. You know that when you do things that are not correct, you dirty your spirit. The Bible says in, in Ephesians chapter 4, we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. We should not vex the Spirit of God. Because the Holy Spirit of God is in you. You can vex, you can make the Holy Spirit to be grieved. You can vex him by the way you live. We don't need to begin to enumerate and count all the sins that we do. We know. There's, if you are a child of God and you are doing something wrong, you are saying something wrong, you know that it's wrong. You are seeing something with your eye that is dirty, you know these things are dirty. You are hearing things that are dirty, you know. You have to run away from them. You are doing business that is dirty, you have to know. You know. We don't need to point that thing again. You are in a relationship of, of, with somebody, a wrong relationship. You know. Should we go counting them again? They contaminate your spirit. And some of them think they dirty our body. Even our body, God cares about our body. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's saying. So come out from among the world. Come out from among them and be separate. And read. Take away. Deny. Refuse all that contaminate spirit and body. And first, call, first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. I, I just want to read that one. You can just wait. I'll read from here. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23. All of us who have our brochure. We know that that's a scripture. I think the leadership, they know. It's a scripture for to minister total health to total man. It says that may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. That makes you holy. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May Apostle Paul said, May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. Your spirit is, is blent or has is grieved. The spirit of God, because when you have God in you, God connects with you through your spirit. It's grieved when you begin to do things to God that is not correct. God said, Paul says, May that spirit be blameless. May it not have blame. Hallelujah. It's my cry for myself and for you. May your spirit not have blame, brother. You have gone so far, you are sitting here, you are sacrificing. May the Lord Jesus rapture you. May the Lord Jesus take you home when it's time. Amen. May the Lord Jesus snatch you to that mansion that he's preparing. Spirit, soul, and body, so our emotions. May we keep our emotions still. Our, our soul talk about our mind. The things that go through our mind, may they be clean. Hallelujah. The emotion talk about the mind, talk about the will. May our will be aligned with the will of God. Hallelujah. Most times believers' will are not aligned with the will of God because we fear what believers say, eh, and when I want to do my thing, I will just do. Because when I ask the will of God, the will of God is too hard. He will say something, I will not be able to do. Better just do my thing, I better don't ask God. Is that how we should live? Is our Father God is a bad God? When he's saying God this way, is it not for our good? It's for our good. Huh? May your will be lost in God. The hymn writer said, my will be lost in thine. Hallelujah. My spirit, soul, and body, even this body, what you do with this body matter. If you cut something in this body that is not of God, matter. What you put on this body matter. The way you keep this body matter. Stand up. Don't make any adore of this body. There are certain things you can't do without. They are like chains in your neck. 
But the Lord God says in his word, I like Paul, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. That's the prayer for, of Paul for all of us. And that's our prayer this morning. Hallelujah. So in times like this, check your, keep constantly begin to check your relationship with God. In times like this, go to the scripture and search for nuggets. Search for spiritual insight. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, you will see things that people of the world don't see. And when you see them doing it, you will be wondering, are they really human beings? Search. The second point is that in times like this, read yourself. Get rid. Throw away everything that defy, everything that dirty your spirit, your soul, and your body. Begin to pray. Oh, Rabba Sindu Rumba Bakata Shindu Rumba Bakata Rabba. Yahweh! Shana Baba in times like this. Help us to check our relationship with you constantly. Whether it is Kodia. Whether it is really a true relationship. Because you will shock some people. We don't want to be shocked, Lord. Help us to get rid of all those things that contaminate our spirit, soul, and body. Help us to throw them away by the power. Holy Spirit, Lord. May those yokes be broken. May the things that dirty your temple be broken in the name of Jesus. Yahweh, please pass no one by here. Yahweh is our desire to meet in heaven and hug each other and say, finally we made it. Finally we made it. Finally we made it. Lord is our cry. Help us, Yahweh. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Holy Spirit of the living God. Beautify us. Beautify us, Jesus. Help us to connect with you. Help us to connect with you, Lord. We want to connect with you, Father. We want to know you and the power of the resurrection. So that we will resurrect with you when you come. Help us, Jesus. Lord God, we continue to just pray that you will make us, O Father, to seek your face. Lord, that we examine ourselves every day, O God, so that we will not be embarrassed. We will not have any surprises, O God, but we will walk with you all the day. I pray, Lord God, that you give us that desire for you, yes. that will long after you, that will seek your face day and night, O oh God. And Father, that will really draw close to you. Draw us nearer to you, Lord God. Draw us nearer to you, O oh God, each day. O oh Father, we pray, forgive us, O oh God, where we have wronged you. Forgive us, Lord, where we have be negligent. Forgive us, O oh God. And Father, we pray that you will give us another chance. Draw us close to you, Lord God. Draw us to yourself and speak tenderly to us, O oh God. Put right the things that are not going in our hearts or in our lives. Lord, we pray that your spirit will enable us to make things right with you. O oh God, we praise you. Thank you, Lord, for this for this occasion to meet with you, Lord, to fellowship with you, to fellowship with one another. I pray, O oh God, that you will continue to really make us, O oh God, to desire you, even in our houses, Lord, we will draw close to you. Yes, I will pray, O oh Father, that by your grace, Lord, will come again next week to experience you. We'll come again, oh God, to share with you, to share with one another, to fellowship with one another also. Oh God, take the glory, take the honor, Lord. We pray as we go, Lord, that even we meet with our families, the children who are not here, and others will be able to share with them a little that we have got here today. Let your name be glorified, oh God. Father, we praise you and glorify your name because you love us 
and you will lead also God to salvation. Your words are set. No, you will, whatever you will start, you will not leave it without completing it, Lord God. And we just trust you that, Lord, the life that you started in us, the what we have, the transformation that you started, Lord, you will bring it to completion. Lord, that you will transform us to the fullest, till the perfect image of Christ be formed in us. Take the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you for your servant. I pray that you will reveal her and use her. Thank you for every one of your children. I cover everyone here under the blood of Jesus. And I pray, Lord God, that you will open ways that have been blocked before us. We pray for the real light, oh God, the light of your salvation. We pray for your favor all through the week, oh God. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.